From Abbas's perspective, high water equates to new opportunities. Places that were once for the birds and squirrels are now expanded hunting grounds with lots of cover for safety and places to ambush prey. From an angler's perspective, it's that needle in the haystack thing. A daunting task of a whole lot of new ground to cover. Big bass. Oh, that's a good one there. Look at that one. Oh, big, but nice one. Nice. Oh, whoa. Oh, look, two look, there's two of them. With them. There's, there's two of them. Oh, another man. big large mouth. Yeah, look at that. Nice fish. I've seen whoa. that other one. Come here. Look at that guy there. That's a good one. Come on. Look at that. There we go. Oh, look at that one there, Al. Oh, come here. Oh, man. He had a buddy with him. Look at that. That's a nice one. Right now, Al and I are on a lake that's actually about three to four foot high, and we're gonna look at strategies for catching both largemouth and smallmouth bass out of high water conditions. We'll get her back in the water. The bay we're in right now has got a mark in about five and a half feet of water. Normally, this is choked with weeds you can't even get here. You know, you take four feet of water out of here. We are so far back in from where we normally fish, and the fish are back all the way in these areas. Good at sun exposure on this bank here. And there's another one out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right in this lake right now, there's just tremendous uh, fields of a uh, of flooded cover. And you'll notice the bank, what we have here, when we're actually fishing the hard bank, and that's one of the big keys for uh, catching fish in these really high water conditions. So many people would have the tendency to, you know, when you see those big fields of wood, to go flipping through there. But realistically, a lot of times the real key is to get back where you don't have so much inundated flooded cover, you can actually access the fish with the, as you see here, the sharper banks. And where you're fishing directly on the hard bank is one of the real keys. Like I said, we're way, way back in these cuts. In a lot of environments where you get real high, high water uh, from rains or meltdown or something, something like that, the river itself turns really, really dark. And if you got creeks or, or, or feeder creeks coming in, they're pouring mud in. What we do in a lot of these conditions, you get to these dead end coves with a lot of cover way, way back. And uh, they're still kind of clear. This is some of the clearer water that we found. There's no runoff here at all. There's no creeks coming in, nothing to dirty this stuff up. And uh, these are sometimes the kind of spots that are sitting and holding the largemouth. Smallmouth are a little bit different. 